Joe Koreshi with Act 17 Apologetics here. This is uh, July 5th, 2009. We're here in Washington, D.C. at the Islamic Society of North America National Convention, ISNA. Um, you may remember a few weeks ago, we asked a question about this pamphlet, uh, Islam's War on Terror, at a conference in Dearborn, actually at a festival in Dearborn. And we weren't received well. Uh, we were actually ultimately forced to leave the festival just for asking a simple question. Uh, the people here at ISNA have been much, much better. Uh, we can go anywhere, we can ask any sort of question we want. We can ask very difficult questions, and people have been allowing us to ask these questions. In fact, they've been embracing the questions, saying, this is a great question, let me find a scholar who can answer that for you. So, the receptivity here is amazing. People are, people are really open to seeking the truth, and I find this to be a very different scenario than the, the scenario that we had at Dearborn. I'm very thankful for this. However, even here, we find pamphlets that are very, very similar. For example, what does Islam say about terrorism? Uh, when you actually open this up, in fact, the very verse that was quoted by the other pamphlet is quoted here. Chapter 5, verse 32 of the Qur'an, in order to show that killing is not allowed. Let me read what is quoted. It says, If anyone slew a person, unless it be for murder or for spreading mischief in the land, it would be as if he slew the whole people. And if anyone saved a life, it would be as if he saved the life of the whole people. This, as you can see, is the large text which introduces the rest of this pamphlet. Uh, basically, it's the banner for this pamphlet. Obviously, the text is saying, if a person kills one person, it's as if they uh, kill everyone. And if you save one person, it's as if you save everyone. Therefore, showing that the Quran promotes saving people's lives and not killing. However, this, this verse used in this pamphlet and in this pamphlet ignores uh, the context of what is actually being stated in the Qur'an. Now, if you turn to the Qur'an, again, this is chapter 5, verse 32 of the Qur'an, you will notice that it's not the Muslims who are being spoken to. This, this commandment is not being given to the Muslims, it's being given to the Jews. It says, on that account we ordain for the children of Israel that if anyone slew a person, unless it be for murder or for spreading mischief in the land, it would be as if he slew the whole people. So, this is an injunction actually given to the Jews. This is not something that is given to all the Muslims. But, even if it were given to the Muslims, let's go to the very next verse. Verse 33. The punishment of those who wage war against Allah and with His Messenger and strive with might and main for mischief throughout the land is execution or crucifixion or the cutting off of hands and feet from opposite sides or exile from the land. So in this verse it says if someone wages war, whatever that might mean, against Allah and His Messenger and strives to create mischief throughout the land, the punishment is execution or crucifixion. So in the context we find that these pamphlets are not promoting the entirety of what the message is here. This is talking about a message that was given to the Jews. Uh, and the very next verse shows that the killing and crucifixion of mischief makers is allowed. Now what is a mischief maker? Never is that really defined anywhere. Um, it, could be, it could be anywhere from killing people and, and causing mass genocide, or someone might consider mischief just saying something bad about Muhammad. In fact, while we were here yesterday speaking to some Muslims, that was the general consensus, was that if someone says anything bad about Muhammad, they can be killed. Uh, so mischief making can be anything from really bad crimes to really minor things. In fact, that's what we find in chapter 9, the very verse that I asked about when I was in Dearborn. Uh, chapter 9, verse 29 of the Quran, talks about fighting the people of the book, saying that um, they are allowed to be fought until they pay the jizya with willing submission or feel themselves subdued. And the very next verse tells us why. The very next verse says, The Jews call Ozer a son of God, and the Christians call Christ the son of God. That is a saying from their mouth. They but imitate what the unbelievers of old used to say, Allah's curse be on them. Allah's curse be on them. So the statement here is that the Jews and the Christians uh, can be cursed um, for their beliefs. Is that not mischief? I would say that if people consider just talking bad about Muhammad mischief, of course ascribing partners to Allah, um, the mushrikeen are mischief makers. 
So what does that mean in context? In context, these very pamphlets that promote peace and lack of terrorism, if you follow out the logical conclusion, you go to the next verse, which says the mischief makers must be killed or crucified, we see what are those mischief makers, and we can apply just being a Jew or being a Christian equals mischief making, then in fact the very verses that these pamphlets are using to promote peace and nonviolence are the definition of violence, kill people for their beliefs. Now, I approached people about this here at this conference. There was a booth uh, that is set up here. It's called the White Islam Booth. And it's a booth that represents an organization here where in the United States all you have to do is dial 877-Y-Islam and a group of people will pick up the phone and answer any question you might have about Islam. I said, well, why bother calling them when the booth is right here? So I went there and I talked to them. And the first man I talked to said, you know what, I'm not the person to answer your questions. How about you talk to a sec uh, separate person? So I went to the person who they referred me to as the one who would know the answers to these questions. However, when I started asking him the questions, he said he simply did not know. Uh, and I respect that. I respect that a lot. But you shouldn't be at a booth which says, ask us questions if you don't know the answers to these questions. This is a recurrent theme. We saw it in Dearborn, we saw it here. Um, so, although I have great respect for the people here, for their openness, their lovingness, um, I find that what they're teaching, no terrorism, what they're teaching, peace and violence, is not actually found in the Quran. The exact opposite is found, and the very verses that they quote to show peace are the ones that show violence. This is Nabil Qureshi with Act 17 Apologetics. We'll be back soon.